leavens the whole lump. A little leaven in the body, in Christianity, will leaven the whole lump. This is 100% fact. If you don't believe it, I'll show you just one example, which is what we're getting ready to look at right now. Let's turn to Acts. Acts chapter 12 and verse 4. Acts 12, 4. And when he had apprended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Amen. Everybody see that in their Bibles, in the regular King James. Hold on. In the regular King James Bible, which we've had for years, before many of the other translations came across, before uh, even the King James Version corrected the deliberate error in the New King James Version, all right, this is what all Christianity was reading. Easter, right there in the Bible. Why do you think Christianity was saying the word Easter? Happy Easter. Easter Sunday's coming, everybody. Each, get your Easter bonnets. Get your Easter clothes. All right? We were, doing it, we were doing it right in the Pentecostal church. It was all about Easter. You know? Even the world was celebrating Easter. I always felt that ironic. But we didn't know. That little bit of leaven, that little, like she said, just a pinch of leaven will leaven that whole lump. That one word, which should have never, ever been in the Bible, if that one word was not in the Bible, you would not never heard Christians say Easter. That is the only reason, because it's in there, and they assume, hey, Easter, it's Easter Sunday. That's leaven. That's corruption. That's sin. Just stop and just think for a moment. We have been sharing the glory of God with Ishtara. Let me give you her names in various cultures. Ishtara, Anglo-Saxon, that's how they pronounced her. In the Babylon, it was Ishtar. In the Hebrew, it's Astara. And in the Greek, Astarte. All right? And of course, we know that Ishtar and Tammuz, we know that whole story. That's how you got the little egg and the suddenly, you know, the rabbit can produce eggs. Now, you ever ask yourself why a rabbit is associated with Easter? Anybody know, so I don't have to say it? Fertility. Estara is the goddess of fertility. In our Bibles, she's called the queen of heaven. Right there in Jeremiah. And isn't it ironic that Catholicism calls Mary the queen of heaven? Where do you think all of this mess comes from? They've incorporated all of that into the gospel. And where do you think Christianity came from? It came out of Catholicism. Catholicism took it over. And back in those days, at the council, not one single, quote, Hebrew was allowed to come to that meeting. This is when they really established the church. It all, uh, Pentecostals, Apostolics, Baptists, whoever you are, whatever your denomination, you all came out of Catholicism from the Protestants. What do you think the word Protestant means? Protest. They were protesting things in Catholicism, so they came out from her, and then they began to break off into the denominations we have today. But guess what? They all carried with them. If I had a suitcase, they carried baggage with them. That's why they continued on Sunday. All of that is Catholicism. That's where it all came from. So the reasons why we have been doing Easter goes right back to them. They would grab what the pagans were doing and thinking they're doing God's will. Okay, well, let's let them come on in with their stuff, you know, and we'll just stamp at Jesus. You know, and they'll go, oh, this is who we've been worshiping? Yes, this is who you've been worshiping. Come on in. You can keep doing what you're doing. No need to stop. No need to change. No. 
What the scripture says, our fathers have inherited lies. You see, you do a thing so long, we, don't, we had no idea where it came from. We just thought it was a part of Christianity. We thought this was a, what we're supposed to do. How many have ever had communion? We thought that was what it was about. Communion is associated with Easter. Catholicism, again, all the things that God set for us to do and to celebrate and to keep, we were void of that. We did not do one thing, one of his feasts, not a single one. We did everything that was rooted in the world, rooted in paganism practice. But the things that God actually said, hey, you guys, I want you to do this in remembrance of me, do all this. Oh, no, we don't, no, 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 no. But we took the things that were rooted in demon worship, in idolatry. We can pretend all day. Oh, that's not what it means to me. I've heard that so many times. It doesn't matter what it means to you. It's what it means to God. And God says he hates it. He says, don't learn what they did and then turn and do it to me. Don't offer that mess to me. I hate that. But they continue. And some, well, he hasn't struck us down. You better be thankful for the blood. You better be thankful for Yeshua making intercession for the saints. You better be thankful that our sins have been washed away. Be thankful that all that was nailed to his cross. So in response to that amazing love, what should we do? Continue in sin? Paul said, God forbid. No. We should turn from our sin. Acknowledge that this is wrong. God, I'm sorry. I recognize this is error. Help me, strengthen me as I begin to walk towards you. And God is right there saying, here comes my son, here comes my daughter, just like the prodigal son. That was a picture, guys, of the return of the people of God. All right? So Acts says Easter in your Bible. Some of you who do not have King James Bible or some other Bible, they may have changed it and, and corrected that translation in modern times. All right? The word should have actually been what, everybody? Passover. But because of that one little bit of leaven, guys, you see how that powerful, a little leaven can leaven the whole lump? It's incredible. So let's look at this word, Easter, that appeared in Acts. The word Easter only appears one time in the entire Bible. The English word Easter. Not what the actual word is, the Greek, but the translated English word Easter only appears one time. The word in Greek is the Greek number 3957. And if some of you have Strong's Concordant Bibles, you'll see that word, that number there, 3557, under that word Easter. And it's for you to look and see what that word actually is. And when you look at that word, it's Paschal, which is the Pesach, which is Passover. Now again, that word, the real Greek word, appears 29 times, guys. 20, just, just get that in your mind, 29 times in the New Testament. Only one time does it appear mistranslated. I say it's purposely done. Only one time. Anybody want to guess when that one time is? Right there. 29 times the word Pesach is in the Bible, but only one time it's mistranslated. Instead of Pesach or Passover, it appears Easter. That word should have never been a part of the Bible, ever. But some decided, hey, I'm going to put a little leaven in here. But remember from previous teachings, guys, everything is a test. All right? Everything is a test. It did not sneak in there unawares by God. Nope. It's for you, the true students, stewards of God's word. Paul says, rightly divide the word. The Bereans would always go back and study and look. Don't just take people's words as make sure it's in that Bible. All right? Study to show thyself approved. Isn't that what the Bible say? All right? Not to show somebody else, but you. Make sure you are walking and living it right, okay? All right, so again, 29 times the word Paschal appears in the Bible in the Greek. 28 times is the correct translation, which is Passover. But only one time it is an error in that Acts chapter 12, verse 4, as Easter. That word should have been uh, Passover. The Greek word is Passover. Well, let's go to Matthew, please. Matthew chapter 24, and verse 5. 
For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Did you hear that? Yahshua said, many are going to come in his name, preaching from the pulpit, saying, Yahshua, Jesus is Christ. He's the Lord. Hallelujah. We got to be saved. Now, come on and let's have this Easter lunch. But shall deceive many. So the deception is going to come right out of the church. The error is going to come right out of the church. You won't even, it won't even come to your mind. Oh, they're, they're teaching error. No, because you're going to see other people all excited and into it. All right. They're going to be like jerking and all of that and shouting and all of that. So there must be the spirit of God must. This must be not so. Not so. All right. Not true. And even if they prophesy and some of the stuff, remember, the Bible says they will do that. All right. They will do that. And you'll say, oh, God must be. This must be the truth. Many will come. All right. Grab a verse 11. Verse 11, and many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. Many false prophets shall arise and again deceive, cause to error, many. Not a few folks, many. Look at what that one word Easter has done to the body. Think about it. Look at the what, what and, 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 by, and, and by the way, you guys understand too that Tammuz, who's associated with Vistara, Guess what his birthday is? December 25th. You can't make it up. See how they've all incorporated all their pagan practices and we're up here Christians. Thank you, Jesus, for your birthday. Singing, what did I always say? Noel, Noel. <laughs> Literally, no L, no God. All right? L is Hebrew for God. All right? So again, we've inherited lies. Right from the pulpit, John and the others said that they came from us. They came out of the ant. The spirit of Antichrist comes out of us. It's not coming from the world. Stop looking at the world. You better look at people. You better look at politicians. You better look at parties that are claiming Christianity. <laughs> you better be careful of them. Those are the ones you better look at. All right. And why do you say that? Because folks say that they are Christians. All right. And they stand for Jesus. But they are the wickedest, nastiest, most evil people hating so much hatred. I've never seen so much hatred <laughs> preach from the pulpit. All right. You guys know what I'm talking about. You've seen it. There's no playing around with it. This is for real. This is real life. You're living. All right. These people. The Bible is true. Don't think it's not. All right. When he said that he's going to send strong delusion and he says many people are going to be teaching this mess. All right. Misleading many. You better believe it's going to happen. All right. So, and by the way, those are some of the main advocates for Easter and, and, and Christmas. <laughs> All right. Give us back our Christmas. Merry Christmas. Say it. You see? All right. No. War on Christmas. You see that? No. Oh, so here you come speaking the truth. So guess what you are now? An enemy. Yeah. Yeah, you're a cult, you're an enemy. You, 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 wait, you, you don't like Christmas? You see? See how they're setting it up? You better, you better watch. All right? People are looking, trying to find a mark of the beast. Wait till, woo, wait till we get into that. Oh my God, wait until we get into that, man. All right, let's look at Mark chapter 3, 13 and 6, please. Grab that one too. And Jer, if you can grab Deuteronomy chapter 12, and you'll start at verse 29 through 32. All right. So, Beth, Mark 13 and 6. Mark 13 and verse 6. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. All right. Once again, they are not going to be saying, Jesus is not Lord. He is not. No. These are going to be preachers, people, teachers. All right. Saying Jesus is the Messiah. But what are they going to do? Bring deception, bring error. Deuteronomy 12. 29 through 32. Deuteronomy 12, 29. When the Lord thy God shall cut off the nations from before thee, whither thou goest to possess them, and thou succeedest them, and dwellest in their land, take heed to thyself that thou be not snared by following them. After that, 
they be destroyed from before thee, mm-hmm. and that thou inquire not after their gods, saying, How did these nations serve their gods? How did these people worship? Even so will I do likewise. Mm-hmm. What did they do? What all kinds of, how did they worship their gods? Oh, I want to learn how to do that. Let me see how to do it. I'm not worshiping their gods. No, oh, oh no. Only, only the Lord. Baal, no, no. I just want to know how they worship. Because it, it looked nice. I like it. It looked like, you know, really nice. It's so orderly and just, oh, it's so beautiful. Oh, I just love their praise and worship. Let's bring that into worshiping Yah. Let's bring that into worshiping the Lord. Let's celebrate Jesus this way, like they did. What does God say ultimately? Thou shalt not do so unto the Lord thy God. Say that part again. Thou shalt not do so unto the Lord thy God. Go ahead. For every abomination to the Lord, which he hateth. Which he what? Hateth. Hate. Go ahead. Have have they done unto their gods. For even their sons and their daughters, they have burnt in the fire to their gods. Well, I'm not burning in my sin and my children. Are you not? Are you not? You, you pretty much are. When you go ahead and you start bringing in that court and allowing the children to do this, yes, you are. All right? Listen, Yeshua said, if a man looks at a married woman and desires her, he's committed adultery with her even though he has not. You see the connection? All right? Well, that's not what it means. To, no, it's what it's, God has established. He even said, if you hate your brother in your heart, even though you didn't actually physically murder them, it's as if you murdered them. In God's sight, you, 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 you murdered somebody. How are you going to stand before the Lord? Lord? Uh, here I, I didn't ever murder. I never. Yes, you did. Guys, when we, that's, that's a hatred and all that. Like the, a lot of these preachers are teaching hate. All right. From A to Z, I'm not going into it all. You've heard people teach it. All right. From all sides. Uh, of, of, of the, of the uh, world, all right? Ethnicities, whatever, all right? If they're speaking hatred, that's the same as murdering, all right? Not my words, it's your Bibles. All right, so, uh, Jer, continue to 32. Verse 32, what things soever I command you, observe to do it. Whatsoever things I command you. This is what God says, do my things. Why are you doing the world stuff? So I say, what are you, well, what are you doing? At, oh, Easter? What else? You do, Christmas? Are, are, are you going to do uh, tabernacles? Are, are you going to do Passover? You see, why is it that we're quick to grab those things that are rooted in the world, but we reject the things that are in the Bible for us to do? It makes no sense unless. So we can't take away the things of God. We can't add to them. We do what he instructed us to do. Those feasts that he established. They are called the Feast of the Lord in Leviticus chapter 23. The Lord says, these are my feasts. My appointed times. And by the way, when it says feasts, it's not talking about food. Oh, you got to have hamburgers and hot dogs. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> right? It's not, he's not saying that, a, a big banquet. No. He's saying, these are my, that word feast is moed in Hebrew, meaning appointed times. These are the set times. And when we really get into the Hebrew and understanding of it, you all know this already. It means these are the time I'm going to meet with you. I want you to be there. And he says, these are perpetual. These are everlasting. So because he didn't say, until my son comes. Nope. We continue this because they are a shadow of things to come. Not that came. People twist Paul's writings, man. Oh, see, there's just a shadow of things to come. You know, you know we, got, we had Jesus came. Our... When Paul wrote that, Jesus had already came. Okay? So Paul did not say things that came, that passed. No, he says these are things, shadows of things to come in the future. But the, the substance of those things, of the feast, what did he say they were? That the substance is the body of Christ. These feast days, Passover, tabernacle, oh, that's the body. 
of Christ. No wonder Paul says when we take the cup and we don't really appreciate the body, we are taking damnation. We don't, we, we don't see and discern the body. You see? Recognize that this is the body of Christ. The feast is all about Christ. How dare you put a pig, a honey-baked, glistening ham, and say that that's Christ. You see how the enemy has so fooled the church? Jeremiah 16, 19. What does it say? Oh, Lord, my strength and my fortress and my refuge in the day of affliction. Mm -hmm. The Gentiles shall come unto thee from the ends of the earth and shall say, surely our fathers have inherited lies, mm -hmm. vanity and things wherein there is no profit. Hallelujah. We have inherited lies. Well, well, it's, it's, it's good enough for Bishop such and such. It was good enough for that one before him and his father and his father. It's good enough for me. That's because he has inherited lies. <laughs> Our fathers have inherited lies. It was something passed down from generation to generation, and we kept that perpetual lie going. And we think it's true. I mean, man, people have kids thinking that a rabbit can lay eggs. And they're going to be chocolate bunnies. You know, really? What does that have to do with Christ? It's an abomination. It's an abomination. That's why I'm always saying, thank God for the blood. That's why the Bible says, he forever liveth to make intercession for the sinners. No, no, not the, the saints means holy. He, why would he intercede for holy people? Uh -uh. For intercession for the adulterers. He forever lives to make intercession for the murderers. He forever lives to make intercession for the saints. Saints mean are those holy people. Why would you need intercession if you are holy? Because we have inherited lies. We have so much mess. We do things we have no idea. We think is right, and it's not. Remember those people with the golden calf? Remember that Moses and the Passover time? Remember that? And what would they do? They made a golden calf and said, these be our gods. And who did it? The people? No, it was Aaron. And who was Aaron? The priest of the people. The pastor, guys. Preaching it. Saying, okay, I'll conform to what you want. I'll give you what you want. Your itchy ears want. All right? And what did he do? Here comes the golden calf and said, tomorrow's a feast to the Lord. He did not say a feast to Ra. He did not say a, beast, a feast to Baal. Or is Sarah any of No, nope. he says to Yah. Look it up. Capital L O R D. That's Yod Hey Vav Hey. He said, Tomorrow's a feast to the Lord. We're just going to use this. And note, it was a golden calf. Where'd they learn that? Egypt. They learned the ways of the world and tried to reform it into worshiping God with it. Where does Easter come from? The world rudiments in the world, and we turned it and repackaged it, and now we dedicate it to God. Where did Christmas come from? All right, Again, the world, and we twisted it and packed it, and now we say it's God's. Absolutely wrong. Absolutely wrong. God hates it. All right, continuing on. Uh, Exodus chapter 34, verse 12 through 13. Exodus 34, 12. Mm -hmm. Take heed to thyself, lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, whither thou goest, lest it be for a snare in the midst of thee. But ye shall destroy their altars, break their images, and cut down their groves. You know what that does? You know how we do that? When we expose it. You're doing that by exposing their mess, that mess, all right? Things that were, uh, people were actually worshiping demons unaware, all right? Go ahead. Verse 14. For thou shalt worship no other God for the Lord, Amen. whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God. 15. Lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, and they go a whoring after their gods, and do sacrifice unto their gods, and one call thee, and thou eat of his sacrifice. Wow. It's like that's the whole Easter thing right there. It's right there. And somebody's going to call you and say, come on over here, it's Easter, Easter supper, Easter dinner. Let's celebrate the Lord. We worship, oh, thank you, Jesus. 
Come on. It's the Sunday worship supper. Big meal. Chilling. Right? All that stuff around the pig. It's awesome because the, the main meat of Easter is swine. Yeah. Can you never like stop and think like, why is that associated? That whole thing about the uh, 40 days of Lent? Hamul stuff. The uh, Old Testament mentions it. We were weeping for Tammuz. It's insane. But people don't care. They don't care. All that matters is what it means to me. No wonder he said, the righteous scarcely make it in. Scarcely. No wonder he said, broad is the way that leads to death, but narrow is the way that leads to life, and few there be that find it. It's not going to be a lot, folks. It's going to be a remnant. Unfortunately, everybody's not going to make it. But a remnant. Few there be that find it. All right. Uh, was that it? Verse 16. And thou shalt take of their daughters unto thy sons, and their daughters go a whoring after, uh, after their gods, and make thy sons go a whoring after their gods. Yep. 17. Thou shalt make, me, make thee no molten gods. 18. The feast of unleavened bread shalt thou keep. Seven days thou shalt eat unleavened bread, as I commanded thee, in the time of the month Abib. For in the month Abib thou camest out from Egypt. Amen. Again, Abib is the same as Nisan, the first of the year, the first month of the year, which is coming up next week. My goodness, guys. The new year is next week. I know some people are, what? The new year? The new year? What do you mean? Yes, there is a biblical new year and there's a carnal new, new year. All right? The worldly new year in the Hebrew is uh, Tishrei. You ever hear them say, you know, Lashana Tova, Happy New Year? That was just, that's the seventh month. Because again, there was a holy calendar and then there's a carnal, a worldly calendar. And our, our Gregorian calendar have us at January. All right? But God has us, which we just read. Did we read Exodus 12 yet? Did we get there? No, nope, we're getting ready to go there now. Let's go to Exodus 12, starting at verse 1. What does that say? Hold on, let me get it too, please. Exodus 12 and 1. Everybody take a look at this for yourselves, please. Try to follow along with me and make sure everything I'm saying is right there in your Bible. All right. Or whether you accept it or not, that's up to you. All right. There's, 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 you know, Jesus walked among the people that are supposed to have been religious people. All right. The people of Torah, right? And they didn't believe him. What do you think people are going to do to you? All right. And the Lord spoke unto Moses and to Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, this month, and I like, the, I like the fact that he says, in the land of Egypt, in the place of your captivity. So wherever you are, God is still speaking to you. You're not in Israel, okay? They're, they were not in Israel. They were right there in the, in the wilderness, right in your desert, okay? Right in your struggle, right in wherever you are. He says, in verse 2, this is Yah speaking again. He says, this Kodesh, this month, shall be unto you the Rosh, the beginning, the head, the chief, of Kodesh, of months, all right? This month, what month is that? That is the month of Nisan. You'd have to read the other stuff previously and after it. This is the month of Passover when they began to come out. He says, it shall be the first month of the Shana, the year to you. I love that. God said to you, just like he says that when he speaks of his Ten Commandments. He always says, thou shall not. You shall not. You shall not. Right? He didn't say, the world shall not. Stop trying, again, I keep saying it, stop trying to save the world and make the world follow God's command. It's not for the world. It's for you who have been, who have been brought out by the blood of the Lamb. It's for you he has, whom he has redeemed. All right? You who are in covenant with him. You shall not. Not them. They can do what they want to do. 
All right? You don't judge the world. God is going to judge them. I'm going to give you that scripture in a moment. All right? But no, we're out here, you know, no, no, don't do this. You know, the LSABQ, CBD, whatever. You know, they do what they want to do. I'm not against them. I'm telling you right now, I'm not against none of them. I'm not against nobody that's doing this or the other. It's against the word of God, all right? But that's not my place to, no, uh uh-uh. I got to do what I'm supposed to do, all right? God is going to take care of them. Now, do I say something is wrong? Is it against the scripture? Absolutely. You'll never hear me say, no, oh, it's okay. God is pleased with it. No, he's not. None of that. He's not pleased with murderers. You can't, you can't just put one group and say, oh, that's good. You know, but unfortunately, the church is doing that. But when it comes to Passover, when it comes to Easter, they're like, oh, Easter. Well, that's just as wrong. Sin is sin. All right? Again, I'm going to reiterate this. He said, if you hate in your heart somebody, you murdered them. Thou shalt not kill. You are guilty of murder even though you didn't do it. Please hear Shema, right? This is so serious, but again, the devil, the adversary, he is so slick. He is good at what he does. That deception, all right? So again, murder, adultery, all of that is the same. All right? We should be just as eminent against all of that, all right? Just like we are about those people of the alphabets, all right? So, again, this is the head of the year to you. Well, who is the you? Those whom he has redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I just saw it go down there. there. Those he has redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. You who have been called out, all right, brung out of your sin. This is for you. God has made this. He has called another, caused another separation from darkness into light, okay? He's separating. He's dividing. Remember he said, I'm going to separate my sheep, separate the wheat from the chaff, all of that, all right? So this is another. These are the people whom God has redeemed from Egypt. Egypt, again, represents the world. Egypt represents sin, bondage, limitations. That's what Mitzrayim means, straits, okay? All right? Not straight like that. Like I said before, people think when Yeshua says straight is the gate and narrow is the way, People think he's saying straight. Look up the word. It's not that word straight. It means pressure, squeezing. All right? All right, continue. It says here, uh, let's see, verse 3, it says, Speak unto the children, unto the congregation of Israel, and say unto them, In the tenth day of this month, the month of Nisan, they shall take to them every man a lamb according to his house. And of their father's uh, lamb, a house. All right, for a house. Again, that is the 10th of Nisan. Traditionally, the 10th of Nisan is called Lamb Selection Day. It's when you pick that perfect lamb without spot and without blemish to be the lamb that's going to be used for the Pesach. Pesach is the Hebrew word Passover. It means the victim. It's God's victim. It's actually called the Pesach Yahweh, meaning the Lord's victim. Now, you pro- they're supposed to take that lamb on the 10th of Nisan, watch this, and then they are to examine it for those four days, making sure there's, they find no fault in it. Can somebody say Jesus, right? I find no fault in him, remember? Again, Guess when Yeshua came in with the triumphant entry? Remember when he came into Jerusalem riding on the donkey? They said, behold your king. John also called him previously. Here comes the Lamb of God. So here comes this Lamb. Guess what day that happened to be? The 10th of Nisan. Perfect. And what are the people saying? Hosiana, Hosiana, Save now, save now. All right? Here he is. And that's a picture of Yeshua saying, here I am the Lamb of God, the victim of the Lord that's going to take your sin. And what was, and remember, how did the people come out of Egypt? By the blood of the Lamb. That was the only thing that saved them, folks. If you did not have the blood applied to your house, ah, you could not come out. 
guess what was going to come in? The destroyer. Because you're guilty. People make the, the, the wrong assumption that, you know, only the, uh, the, the angel of death would only go in to the Egyptians' houses. No, if any of those Israelites did not apply the blood, it went right in there too and killed the firstborn. It's, in, it's so beautiful. I could be here all day talking about this part. All right, The whole idea, God said, I'm going to kill the firstborn. The firstborn, if it does not have the blood. God calls Israel his what? First. And you know that's Yeshua. Oh, my son. All right? That's Yeshua. All right? So again, it's a picture of that whole scenario. Have the blood. And guess what's going to happen? Israel is going to be saved. How? By the blood of the Lamb. And guess what? I don't have, I'm not going to do it here. I don't have my marker. But he said, which we'll, we might read, get to that part. He says to place it on the left and right side and also across the top of the door. That makes the eighth letter, folks, of the Hebrew olive bed. The het. Anybody know what that het means? It's a wall. It's life. You know why it's life? Because it's new beginnings. Eight, right? What is eight? New beginnings. And you turn it on its side, what do you got? Eternity. You see? What is he saying? Het is the starting word for chaim, which is life. All right? So what happens? He is saying that there is life in this house. When you have life, the blood of Christ upon you, but God says there is life yes. in that house, and the destroyer can't destroy you. That's why no weapon formed against you will prosper. I don't care what the media is saying. I don't care what these fake preachers are preaching and telling you, oh, be afraid, be very afraid. No weapon formed against you will prosper. It won't work. <laughs> It won't work. No, nothing the Bible says will be able to separate you from the love of God. Nothing. Oh, I'm afraid if I do this, if I take this vaccination, or if I do this, I'm going to be separated from... That's a lie. It has nothing to do with that. The obvious, and isn't it funny, these people that are Easter lovers and Christmas lovers are the ones trying to tell you what's against God. Isn't that ironic? Don't you find that ironic? That's wrong. Wait till we get into that thing, man. Revelation. Ooh, we. All right. Some folks aren't going to like it. No, because it's truth. All right? And they don't want that. No, nope, no, nope, we want what everybody else has been saying. Now it's okay because why? It gets snapped approval by other, other people. No, it's right there in your Bible. And I don't know. I guess people missed it. I, I don't know. But we're going to go. We're going to look at each word. All right. Going back to this right here, <laughs> it says, your lamp, your, your, your lamp shall be without spot or blemish. Of course, that's Yahshua. He was, they found no fault in him. He came in on that same day. And uh, you know how we say a, a week later they crucified him? It wasn't even a week. It was a few days. All right? They were just saying, they were just praising him. And then a few days later, crucify him. But that's really awesome because look what happens in this Bible. Uh, it says your lamb will spot and blemish. It says you shall keep it. Listen, read, read verse 6, everybody. Uh huh. Now, isn't that awesome that God put that in there? Note what he said the whole assembly shall kill it. What happened on the 14th of Nisan when Yahshua and Barabbas were standing there? And, and Pilate said, who do you want to set free, set free? And the Bible says, all of Israel said, Barabbas, set him free. And what was that say? What, and, but he says, what to do about this Christ? They said, crucify him. Again, all of Israel shall kill him. It's right there in the Bible. All right? And it's so awesome, because guess what else they said? He's innocent. What they, they said, his blood. I'm sorry. Woo! That's powerful. His blood 
be upon us and our children. What is that? The blood of the lamb. We've got to look beyond, guys. Look beyond. All right? His blood. Yes, there's a lot. So much we have not learned. Because we're all going to give, give me the drums, give me that music, give me that ha, ha, ha. And now you got church. Oh, man. And that's why people are so messed up and drunk today. All right. And when, it, when you give them truth, they don't want it. reject it because they've been fed so much milk. They can't eat meat. You see? Their teeth don't even have teeth. All right? <laughs> well, that's the truth. They're bathed, you know, right? All right. Continuing on. It's okay because watch what this Bible says. Um, more over here before I go there. All right. I'm going to try and hurry. All right. Uh, it says, uh, you should take the blood. There's in verse 7. The upper parts of the doorpost. That's what I was just talking about. The, the, the eighth letter. Uh, and in verse 11. And thus you shall eat it with your uh, loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it slowly. Quickly, right? You are dressed. This is nighttime, middle of the night. You are dressed. You're not going to sleep again. There's not going to be a pause and we're going to wait another day. God is saying, get ready, because you're getting ready to come out now, tonight. This night, you're coming out. So be dressed, ready to go. They didn't say, okay, guys, we've got to get ready. Let's go get dressed, because we're, not, we're not leaving today. We're going to leave the next day. What in the world? Stop contradicting what the Bible says. You're coming out right this night, all right? And again, there's other scriptures that prove that too, but anyway, uh, he says, verse 12 says, for I will, what guys, pass through the land of Egypt. What night? This night. And I will smite the firstborn of the land of Egypt. Beast, their gods, their powers, all of that. I will execute judgment. I am Yahuwah. I am the Lord. I, I will do this. I'm going to do it. That's why the Bible says when it comes to things of this world and things going on in this world, God is in control. We think it's governments. We think it's other peoples and politicians. And God is pulling their strings like a puppet. God says he created the evil people for the evil day. People think, oh, this is just happening. Orchestrated, ordered. That's why you guys, if you've been paying attention, you're not that pressed about what's going on. You know these things are going to come and pass, and you are not afraid. Why? Because love, perfect love, does what? Casts out fear. And if you're fearful, you don't got that. You don't understand perfect love. Remember, God is love. All right, He's in control. When you understand that, then you find yourself like Paul, uh, like Yeshua said, "Man, you, you're kicking up against the bricks." You know, and, and messing up your toes, trying to hit a brick with your foot. All right, so you, you can't resist God. You cannot resist him, all right? Mo, uh, what's his name? Pharaoh thought he could resist God. God says, no, I got a plan. You're not about to foil it. Pharaoh was getting ready to let him go. You can't get me over that. Pharaoh was getting ready to let those people go. And because he thought he was going to alter God's plan, no, that's not my plan. Nope. I don't, not, it's not time for that to happen yet. So guess what I'm going to have to do? What? See? You see? All right. It goes. We can go into all kinds of stuff like that. Same thing with uh, Judas. He had a purpose. Judas had that. His purpose was to betray. Nothing Judas could do to, to get away from it. You know. And, and, and that's an awesome teaching too, which is during the season of Passover as well, along with uh, Mary of. Mag, uh, Mary Magdala, yeah, Mary of Magdala, yep, and, and, and Lazarus and all of that, man, oh my gosh, we got so much beautiful things to unpack, folks, and you're really going to be blessed. All right, so again, continuing here, he says in verse 13, and the blood shall be to who? You. To you. It's personal. It's personal. So you, 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 I can't save somebody. We have to do it our, we have to, ourselves. This is personal. I can't pray for you and make you saved. This is a personal thing. We have to each accept this gift, all right? We have to accept. 
God's gift of salvation, his grace personally. All right. It says, uh, and the blood shall be for you a token. That's actually an olive and tov. If you look at the Hebrew, uh, it's an olive, vav, tav, the et. It shall be a sign, a sign upon you, the houses where you are. Hallelujah. And you just touch yourself with this house. This house right here. Yep. It shall be a sign. He says, I love this part. And when I see the blood, I will what, folks? Pass over you. That's 6452. Let's examine that beautiful word. 6452. This is this word right here, which is where the word Pesach or Passover comes from. But this, you, you see it here, and you read it, it's separate. Two words, pass over. Okay? It's 6452. It means to limp, to be lame, to be wounded, to be injured. It also means to dance. It means to halt or to stop. It means to pass over or skip over. It means to spare. All at the same time. So what is this saying? God says when he sees the blood applied to you, remember he says he's going to normally come through and he's going to take out everybody, the firstborn in that house. Guys, do you realize he was getting ready to wipe Israel out? Remember he called Israel his firstborn. So Israel, if you don't accept the Messiah, if you don't accept the blood, God's going to wipe you out. You're not going to be saved just because you're Israel. What was he getting ready to do? That was his firstborn. He told Pharaoh, Pharaoh, let Israel go. It's my firstborn. He's trying to tell us. All right? People think there's another way you can get around it. Oh, no, I can just do good works. Oh, I can just have Torah. I can just, you know, go and dive it and all this. And that's God. No, no, you have to have the blood. And look, notice what he said. And when I see the blood, that word is the, the Hebrew number 7200. All right? Ra'ah. All right? That's the same word connected to Yahweh, Yaira. What does that mean? Yahweh, Yaira. Everybody knows it from church because you would all shout when they said it. All right? It means what? God is my provider. God will provide. And what is he saying? If you really dig and look in it and see it in deeper understanding, he says, and when I provide the blood. See? Yahweh, Yaira. When I see the blood, when I provide the blood. The blood. And of course, how is he going to provide the blood? Through himself, Yahshua. What did he say? I'm going to Pesach over you. I'm going to what? Pass over. I'm going to, there it is. I'm going to spare you. You see? Forgiven from sin. You see? Without the shedding of blood, what? There is no forgiving. You see? You see what's going on? He says, I'm going to halt. I'm going to stand. I wish I had somebody standing here. I'm going to stand in front of them. And he says, I'm not going to allow the devourer to come in, the destroyer to come in. Why is he not going to allow the destroyer to come in? Why? Remember, Yeshua is the firstborn. Remember that. All right. Why is he not? Because that's Yeshua standing at the door. And what is Yeshua doing? He's limping. He's wounded. He's showing that the firstborn has already been destroyed here. And that's what Yeshua did. He died for us. Who are we? The firstborn. Amen. This is why Paul says, Yeshua, our Passover yes. is sacrificed for isn't that, isn't that awesome? Yes. This is so awesome what he is doing for us. And then they don't want you to do this. They don't want you to do Passover. They don't want you to recognize all of this, but they want you to do work of an Easter egg with a chocolate rabbit and Estara, and give her the play praise? What this master of ours has gone through with his beard being pulled out, being spit on, you see, trampled on, smacked with their hands, nails going in his arms, in his hands, 
cheating is wrong, but we're not supposed to pass that ham. It is a mockery. It is an abomination. It's hurtful. Notice, yet he's still interceding for us. Wow. Wow. He still lives to intercede. How do you... <laughs> you can't help but love that, you see? That's why he says that he loved us before we loved him. He says, while we were yet sinners, trans enemies, you see? But he still... What kind of love is that? It is love. It is love personified. All right? Then, of course, Moshiach. It says here, there's so much more, guys. Uh, let me jump down. Uh, go over to, for time's sake, jump over to, I wanted to read this whole thing. What did I say? To 27? Um, Verse 23, jump over to verse 23 of Exodus 12. All right, you, you guys there? 23, for the Lord will pass through, Yah will pass through to smite the Egyptians. And when he sees the blood upon the lintel and on the two side posts, there's the het, the eighth letter. Life it says the Lord will taste out you. Right here. He will be limp. He will be, he will, uh, be laid. He will become us. He will taste out you. He will represent you. That's what Christ did. He took our blame. He became the wounded one. All right? So that we could live. Amen. His blood made a way for us to be able to come out. Never forget, it was only the blood of the Lamb that allowed the people to come up. Come out. If they did not have that blood, they would have been dead. All right, continuing here. And, and again, don't think, like I said before, I have to reiterate this to make sure people got the weight of this. When, the, the, when, when Yah would go in there, to send a destroyer in there, into there to destroy the firstborn, everybody in that house was dying, if you are Israel. Remember, not just the firstborn of that child or that parent, Israel was the firstborn. Get that really grabbed the weight of that. So they would have all been dead, not just somebody's firstborn child in that house of Israel. I'm not talking about the Egyptians. I'm talking about Israel right now. If they did not have that, that whole household would have been destroyed. All right? Because that is the firstborn. All of them. All right. Continuing here. Here's the really where it gets neat. All right. Uh, verse... 24, and you shall observe this thing for an ordinance uh, to thee and to thy sons forever. Leolam. All right? Forever. Not just until my son comes. All right? He says, verse 25, here it is. And it shall come to pass. I love this part. When you come into the land which the Lord has, will give you, according as he has promised, that you shall keep this service. Verse 26. And it shall come to pass. When your children shall say unto you, what mean you by the service? When your children shall say this to you. Now we got to step over there because children is benign. All right? Sons, you know, whatever, children. Like you ever heard the term benign Israel, children of Israel. So when the children shall say to you, I love that. Yah so deep. Because, folks, you know what that's saying for those that have more understanding and deeper understanding in that? He's talking to you about other Christians who don't understand who they are. He said, when they come and ask, why are y'all doing Passover? Passover? What's that? I don't, what were you? We're supposed to be able to inform them what it says. Look, listen to what it says it is. I don't have my glasses and I lost my page. Where was I? 20, 27. Here we go. <clears throat> you ready for this? Listen to what it says. When your children say, say, ask you, 
what mean you by this service? And we have all been told that. If you've ever been doing Passover, other Christians who don't know what this is, Easter and all, they why are you doing this? What is this? What, what is, isn't that Jewish? We're not supposed to be doing this. What, you, Easter, <laughs> right? So, all right. So verse 27 says, you shall say to them, whoo, I love it. It is the sacrifice of Yah's Pesach. Oh my gosh, do you hear those words? It is the sacrifice of Yah's victim. It is the sacrifice of the victim of Yah, the victim of the Lord. And who is our sacrifice? Yahshua, the Bible says, Yahshua, our sacrifice, our Passover is sacrificed for us. It is Yahshua. That's what we're supposed to tell the people. Why are you doing Passover? Because it's about Jesus. This is about Jesus. What does Jesus have to do with his star? What does Jesus have to do with a ham? Easter eggs. Huh? You know where they get the coloring the Easter eggs from? They used to sacrifice babies to Estara. And they would dip the eggs into the blood. Everything's have its origin. And it's just been repackaged and say, now you're just coloring it. That's what they used to do. That's what their, her priests used to do. The queen of heaven. All right? So again, it says that this is the sacrifice of the Lord's Pesach, listen, who passed over the houses of the children of Israel. It's telling you right there, this is the sacrifice of Jesus who stood at your door, danced over your door, played the victim over your door, the wounded one over your door, so that the devourer, the destroyer, would not come in. Beautiful. And like I said before, I love how he stands at our door. The Bible says it means to halt. I love how it says it means to dance. So Yeshua is dancing before us. That's the celebration of life dance. That's the victory dance. All right? That's the warrior dance. Like those Native Americans, they would get charged up, right? And they would do their little woo 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 woo, you know, dancing around and getting prepped up, getting pumped up. All right? This is what Yeshua has done for us, fought for us. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's see what else is there. Uh, we smoke the Egyptians. All right. And it says, listen to what they said. It says they did. And the people bowed their heads and worshiped. Beautiful. Because a real person, a real child of God, like he said, when you speak to the children, the children of Israel, if Israel is in there and they experience a Passover, they're going to change. Most of the people that I've seen, a lot of them, oh, this is nice, this is nice, and they go right back to their pagan practice. But there is a remnant of folks, when they see Passover, what it really is, they change, oh, they cannot do it, do, can't go without Passover again. My first feast of the Lord was Passover. And I had it by myself, literally, by myself. And that's when God began to just open up a whole lot of other things. I told you the first thing he gave me was the trumpet, the shofar, because I had to be spiritually awoken from dead, working from the sleep. I didn't understand that back then, but I understood it now. You see, God will do things in your life, guys. Some of the things you might have to put on the shelf for a minute until you get up to the understanding. You might not understand it at that moment. But later on, it's going to, oh my goodness. Wow. Yep. First thing he gave me was a shofar, folks. That's incredible. Not this, not that, not something, but a shofar. And guess what? That shofar made other Christians in, in the church I used to go to despise me. They couldn't stand that sound. Remember that, Joyce? Am I telling a lie? Huh. They couldn't stand it. Isn't that interesting? Because the enemy don't want you to wake up. He wants you to stay asleep. He wants to be just like when Jesus returned from, from the wilderness, from being tempted. He went, the Bible says he went to that synagogue. And guess who was right there in the church? The demon. What are you doing here? Don't bother us. Leave us alone. Remember, he even said those words. Leave us alone. We're fine. Let us continue playing church. It's the truth. The demon was in the church, man. 
Right there in the church, yes. Right there with the Easter. Right there with the Christmas. Right there with all of that stuff. Just keep them dancing. Just keep them excited, having fun. Yeah, they'll feel like, ooh, they had church. Just, you can give them whatever they want. And y'all be dancing straight to the pit. <laughs> oh, my, oh my goodness. What I mean pit by, you know, they both fall in the ditch. All right? So you won't be able to get out. All right. All right, error. Whenever you see the Bible, and you're sure the Bible talks of uh, um, if they don't do this, then God says, I'm going to... Uh, Cut them off, yes. Cut them off from the people, cut them off from Israel being Israel. That you're going to lose your identity. Yep. You're going to think you're a Gentile. All right. And that's exactly what happened to people. All right. Uh, uh, let's, real quick, I got a little bit of time left. Go ahead, 1 Corinthians, somebody. 1 Corinthians 11, verse 23 through 26. Jerry, you got that one? 1 Corinthians 11. 23 through 26, and uh, Miss Beth grabbed 1 Corinthians 5, uh, 6 through 13. Oh, read quickly. <laughs> I got a little bit more to go, and I can be done. I can erase this board. All right, who, who has the first one? Is anybody getting anything out of this? I hope I'm not wasting your day, your beautiful Shabbat. <laughs> So 1 Corinthians eleven twenty three, For I have received of the Lord that which also is delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. 24. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. 25. This do what? Do this in remembrance of me. What, are, what were they doing, guys? Everybody knows what they were doing. They were doing Passover. They were going through the Seder. So how did Yeshua say to remember me? Now, again, I'm saying this because most people associate the word communion mm -hmm. with Passover. And that's wrong. The word communion only means fellowship. We are having a communion right now because we are fellowshipping together. You, but the church has made that word communion holy. And it means something that is not. All right? And you think communion is what they were doing. With just a, uh, uh, what do we used to have? A little cracker? And, 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 and one sip, little baby sip. <laughs> Who had two? <laughs> Where, what church you came from? Huh? Oh, she used to have an event. That's something separate. No, and Pentecostal, apostolic, all that. Guys, when we did communion, it was just one little cup. Used to be <laughs> Mad Dog 2020. <laughs> Woo! And, uh, you know, the other things back, this is, you know, we have what we can get, guys. That's, you know, we didn't have the rich and lavish like a lot of those big old cathedrals. Whatever, you know, Lord bless it. Anyway, <laughs> we didn't know any better back in those days. All right, so anyway, communion is not Passover, folks. That is not, no, it's, an, it's a Catholic thing anyway, which they were actually doing before uh, that. The Catholics were practicing doing that stuff with the, the wafer and all that. If you look at some of them, if you go to some of them, you'll even see the starburst, the sunlight. It's, it's Tammuz, it's about the sun god. It's right there on their little wafer, and they say, bless you. You see, oh man, we have inherited lies. So, uh, who was that? Read it. Go ahead. So, verse 25. After the same manner, also he took the cup. Mm -hmm. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. Mm -hmm. This do ye as oft as ye drink it uh -huh. in remembrance of me. Amen. 26. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, Listen. ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Hallelujah. Do we understand the weight of that? He said, as often as we celebrate Pesach, we are doing what about his death? We are showing the death of Yeshua. How? Because he's the lamb. It's all about the, it's him, it's the blood. He's the Passover. But they wanted to strip that from us. 
Because why? Is it their fault? I'm not going to say it's their fault because our fathers inherited lies. You see, everything is going the way God ordered it to go. The point is, when you find out, you better make a change because it's on you now. You can't say, but bishop, but elder, but apostle, but this one, but that one. No, but you. What are you going to do? Do you continue in error because, yo, you know, oh, everybody else is doing error? Do you jump off the bridge because everybody else is doing it? And somebody tell you, God says, don't do that? Do you, well, I don't care. I'm going anywhere. Everybody else did. No, you make a change. That's why God put it before you, right? And that's what we all did. Like I said, that was my first thing, man, Passover. And I was like, oh, this is, this is real. This is, this is why, why haven't we been doing this? Anyway, what do you have? First Corinthians chapter 5. 5, verse 6 through 13. Okay, go for it. First Corinthians chapter 5 and 6. Your glory is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? You there? Purge out therefore the old leaven, that you may be a new lump, as you are unleavened. For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Hallelujah. Verse 8. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Let us keep what? Keep the feast. What do you think the feast was? Feast of communion? <laughs> no. The feast of Easter? No. The feast of the Moed, the appointed time of the Lord. Pesach, Passover. What happened? What in the world happened? Continue. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, mm -hmm. neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Mm -hmm. I wrote unto you in an epistle, is not... 27? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What is, what verse this is verse 9. Okay. I wrote unto you in an epistle, not to company with fornicators. All right. Again, fornication is not only like fornication in the literal sense. Fornication is also if we are out there mixing worship, all right, practicing with some other God, you know, mess, okay? All right, that's the same thing. All right, continue. Verse 10, yet not altogether with the fornicators of this world or with the covetous or extortioners or with idolaters, for then must ye needs go out of the world. Do you hear that? He says, no, no, he's not talking about the world, folks. You're going to be around these type of people. You got them at your jobs. You got them all through just a period of life, period. He's making focus on the church, okay? That's why the Bible says, you shall not. You shall not. Don't worry about them. Let, they do what, let, they, let them do what they're supposed to do. Think of, just stop and think for a moment. Remember the story of, of, of um, uh, Lot going into Sodom and Gomorrah? That's been going on before Lot came. That didn't just suddenly start. That's been going on for long. They got big old kingdoms, man. You know, that stuff was happening before them. It didn't bother God until Lot got in there and they tried to mess with them. That's when it, he's been hearing about this. Because of Lot praying. All right? Now it's a problem. Now God's going to step in. Okay? But no, God is perfectly fine with the world doing He's got his eye on you. You are his chosen people. We are supposed to be different from the world. You, the whole world is not going to change. The United States is not going to become followers of the Bible. They're not going to be keeping the commandments of God. These people are not going to change from Sunday to Shabbat. They're not going to stop eating their foods that God said in this week's Torah portion we should and shouldn't eat. That's not going to change. All right? A lot of them people are imposters. I, I keep trying to say it. You don't become partakers of it. And unfortunately, many of church people are. They are the, some of the church folks who messianic and all that. They are one of the biggest pushers of politics. Right there in the church. Man, what in the world? I understand. The government and all that, the Bible is about politics. It is. You know, God's kingdom. This, 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 yes, of course. But we are getting caught up in this world's kingdom. That's the problem. And they're teaching that. And what is that spewing? Hatred. Hatred. Hatred, guys. Don't get caught up. And I, I, I hope a lot of the people that have passed through here have heard something and they, something sparks in them and say, oh, no, this is not right. You know, but unfortunately, many will not shema 
They will do whatever their flesh is telling them to do, and that's to hate people. All right. Um, where were we? Verse 11. Okay. But now I have written unto you not to keep company. If any man that is called a brother be a fornicator okay. or covetous or an idolater or a railer or okay. a drunkard or an extortioner with such a one, no, not to eat. Keep going. Verse 12. For what have I to do to judge them also that are without? Here it goes. Do not you judge them that are within? Doesn't make big hands in the house of God. Continue. Verse 13. Here it comes, guys. But them that are without God judge it. Let me tell Therefore, you. Therefore. So hold on. Let me hear you. Let me say this again. What it just said. Those that are without, God will judge. Those in the world, those are doing those things that, that are, you know, detestable to God, God will judge them. We focus on this house, the house of God, the body of Christ all over this world. That's when the body of Christ does something wrong, we should speak about it. Don't worry about the world. God will judge them. You, you, please read that again. Real, one more time so everybody can hear it clearly. But them that are without don't, God. That, that means, don't just read it without God like that. But them which are without. Them that are without, God judges. God judges. Okay? God judges them. All right? Dude, is that clear? Everybody see that clearly in your Bible? All right. All right. Therefore, put away from among yourselves that wicked person. All right. Again, he's talking about the people in the church, not those outside the church. That's why the Bible says, you shall not kill, you shall not steal. We, not the world, shall not kill, not the world shall not steal. We're supposed to be doing this. All right. We're almost done here. Let's grab, uh, what is 10, 14 through 21? Jared, can you grab that one? And then, Beth, you can grab Deuteronomy 32, verse 16 through 18. And we are pretty much done. 1 Corinthians 10, 14. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. 15. I speak as to wise men, judge ye what I say. 16. Cup of blessing which we bless is it not the communion of the blood of Christ Pause right there again you take that one word and you think that that's oh that's what it means communion you're talking about communion wrong that word is the Greek number 2842 research it on your home at, at home in your books and see what I'm telling you is the truth the word communion is means fellowship You'll find the word in 1 Corinthians 1, 9, Philippians 2, 1, 1 John 1, 3, and other places as well. And it simply means fellowship. He's making reference of the cup is during Passover. But he's already figured you understood that. All right? So and that's called when we have fellowship. We're fellowshipping during those feast days. That's why he said as another, don't forget the assembling of yourselves together. That's fellowshipping. All right? So again, Jer, what does that say? Verse 16, the cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? Mm -hmm. The bread which we break, is it not the commun communion of the body of Christ? Yep. 17, for we being many are one bread and one body, for we are all partakers of that one bread. Amen. 18, behold Israel after the flesh, are not they which eat of the sacrifices partakers of the altar? 19. What say I then, that the idol is anything, or that which is offered in sacrifice to idols is anything? 20. But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, uh -oh. they sacrifice to devils Whoa. and not to God. Did you hear that? Don't bring that mess in and cause you to think you're worshiping God. We are sacrificing to devils unawares. You see, happy Easter. You see what I'm saying? You're praising demons, man. Not God. It's right there in the Bible. All right, continue. Mm -hmm. Verse 20, but I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. See? That same word for communion again. You see? Mm -hmm. But it's fellowship translated. It's, just, it's the same word. 
Why didn't they take communion? All right? Because you would have probably saw it even clearer then. Yeah. Yeah. All right? So yes, again, no, we are not to do that. All right? Uh, read verse 25. 25? Yeah, you just did 21, right? No, 21 oh. is next. Okay, go ahead. 21, ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Oh, my goodness. Say it again, sir. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. So when you're doing Easter, you are drinking the cup of devils. There's no skippy de do around it. All right? Mm. That is demonic idolatry. Bible says so. It's not me. All right? Now, you can go, well, that's not what it means to me all you want. Okay. All right, it's what it means to God. He just said, don't learn no stuff and then worship me that way. I don't want it. I hate it. It's mad. It's mess to me. Now you're still going to come up with some excuse? Man, what got you? Something has a whole, you, seriously, have you been reprobated? You know, what's wrong? Why are you so fighting against the truth? Why are you fighting against what God wants? Just stop and ponder that question sometime. All right. Uh, go to 25, Jer, and then that's it for you. Yeah, I'll finish 21. One oh. more part. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table yes. and of the table of devils. Once again, please. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. Amen. Oh, Absolutely. You know, it's, uh, there's never enough time. You know how they call it the Last Supper? Yeah. Anybody has never heard of that before? Everybody's heard of the Last Supper. The Last Supper, and they associate that with communion again. All right? It's ironic that they would use the word Last Supper because you know what that does? It doesn't make you think of the feasts. Mm -hmm. Now, if they would have said the Last Feast, mm -hmm. then you would have went back to Leviticus. You would have thought about the Feast of the Lord. Mm -hmm. But this Last Supper, that's just his last meal. Mm -hmm. But no, that was the Last Feast of the Lord. And what was his last feast? Passover. You see, whole different thing just exploded. And now I have more understanding. Yeah, man, it's all, things are like set up. Remember, the enemy has this book too. All right, uh, real quick, who had something? Deuteronomy 32, 16. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. Mm -hmm. With abominations provoked they him to anger. They sacrificed unto devils, not to God, wow. to gods whom they knew not, to new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. Verse 18, out of the rock that begat thee, thou art m unmindful wow. and has forgotten God that formed you. Wow. That's it? All right. Awesomeness. Again, when we are doing those things that are rooted in the world, things rooted in demonic worship, we are forgetting the sacrifice of Christ. We're forgetting what he did. And we're upholding that mess. In the spiritual, they are, they're laughing at the sacrifice of Christ. They're laughing at it. Satan and his demons, they're laughing at it. All right. Um, lastly, guys, and I have a couple of minutes and we're done. Three o'clock, you're out of here. Matthew 26, 27. You got that one, Jer? Ms. Beth? Uh, Mark fourteen twenty three. So Matthew twenty six twenty seven, mm -hmm. and he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, "Drink ye all of it." Mark fourteen twenty three. He took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. Luke twenty two seventeen. And Miss Beth, Luke. 22:20 20. Luke 22:17 mm -hmm. and he took the cup and gave thanks and said take this and divide it among yourselves Luke 22:20 20. Likewise also the cup after supper saying this cup is the new testament in my blood which is shed for you All right real quick and we're gone we're done we just read from Luke 22, verse 17, and we read from Luke 22, verse 20. Did you guys hear what was said? Now, again, uh, Jer read, and he took the cup. And he did, you know, the blessing and the dog. Then she just read, and he took another cup after supper and gave it to them. So how many cups was that that the Bible just showed right there? Was that one cup? 
Why did you get one cup during communion? Why did you just get one cup? They had no idea that what, what, what's going on. This is Passover. Passover has four cups. There are four cups during Passover. All right? Next week, everybody know those four cups. You all should know them already. All right? Next week, know all the four cups. The first one is sanctification, deliverance, and then what? What's the third cup? The third cup is what? Redemption. Now, when is the third cup taken? After supper. So the cup that Yeshua took after supper was called the what? The cup of redemption. That's why he starts talking about redemption. All right? There are four cups during Passover. And the last cup, of course, is the cup of praise. And the Bible says at the end of Passover, they all began to praise the Lord. But again, we're not taught that in church. We weren't taught, no. We weren't taught all that. We were just told it's one cup, one cracker. <laughs> no, it's so much more, so much more involved in this. We're going to stop right there. I know I wore your ears out, but we have a lot to get prepped up for because there are some that may not know, not just here, but also on the internet as well. Thank you.